G'day guys. We're going to try something a little bit different today. I'm going to spend some time behind the lens trying to do some decent videography, put the GoPros away, and Jared's going to break down this pool for us. We'll have a bit of a look. It's We've had a bit of variable weather conditions up here. We had a big dump of rain again last night, so fishing was a little bit tough yesterday. They were a bit touchy, so it's a new day. We'll find out what's happening. It's a bit cool as well this morning, so might be a bit of a slow start. I'll try and go through how I'd fish this pool and, and break it down systematically and just give you an idea of, of what my thought process is when I come through a, a section of river. So yeah, it should be good. Fantastic. All right, mate. Well, I'm not going to completely throw you in the deep end. I think I'll throw you in the shallow end, <laughs> down the back of the pool. <laughs> Best place to start. <laughs> All right, let's go. Probably jump in down the bottom here somewhere. It's a very slow sort of glide into the back there. So I think you could spend a lot of time fishing that. Uh, generally, if I was gonna spend time in the tail out like that in a glide, I'd be hoping to see rising fish picking away at the bottom of that. But we'll get down closer to the river, I think, and we'll just have a look. There looks like there's a few deeper slots on the sides. So we might start in those, just picking away with a dry dropper, just to get a feel for what they're up to, I guess. Before we jump in, I'll just run you through quickly what I'm going to fish today. So I've got my 10 foot 6 uh, three weight Euronymphing rod. Everything's basically a standard setup for me through running line. Then I'll fishing 7x tippet on my top dropper. I'm running a very small silver beaded pheasant tail, just with two red hot spots, one at the collar and one at the abdomen. Um, so that fly worked really well yesterday. And then on my points. I'm going to fish a slightly larger perdigan. So it's a quill bodied olive perdigan, orange hotspot at the collar and copper bead. So we'll start with those. For the dry dropper, I've just got the old trusty nine foot five weight. So on the top, I'm going to start with uh, Tabernas. So it's basically a parachute caddis. Uh, it's got a nice bright pink post on there. It makes me see it very well. Pink's just a color that works for me well. And then on the dropper for that, I'm fishing an even smaller sized two mil silver bead pheasant tail with the two red hot spots. So one thing I'm doing on this is I'm running about 18 foot a leader at the moment. I'll try and fish basically not a lot of fly line out, just leader and just really nice short control drifts. So that's how we'll start, um, but I'm sure the plan will evolve as we, uh, as we get into it. So we're gonna start to work our way into the tail out of the pool here. I've seen one fish rise there, so I'll fish it for a little bit. But the important thing is, because it's such smooth, calm water, I need to come right round the back here. As I do that as well, as I get towards these logs here and climb over, I'm gonna do it very carefully, just in case we've got a deep channel against the logs there that's worth fishing. So we'll basically come in from the rear there, and then we'll start to assess as we get closer. So getting towards it, it's all pretty shallow. There's not really many holding slots there, so we'll work our way over. So as we approach, Basically, the two main characteristics I'm seeing is I've got a little bubble line running through this corner here, which gives me something to aim at. And then I've also got a bit of a deeper slot along this log jam here. So I'm basically gonna work up. I think what I'll do is I'll take cover this side first. There's rising fish further up, uh, but they're very small. When you come into a glide or a, you know, the tail out like this, it's important with your wading to just move very carefully and slowly. Um, you don't want to be putting shock waves through the water. So as I'm getting up, we're starting to see more of the river. It's all pretty shallow at this point. So unless I isolate a rising fish in this really shallow stuff, I don't want to spend a whole heap of time because it would just take a long time to work at all, which you could if you wanted to, but I generally don't like to fish that way. I fish fairly fast and I'm just trying to isolate, you know, that really good sort of fish holding water. So I might head back over this direction a fraction. Basically to start trying to pick out tight to that bank where there's a bit of a slot there. So like I said, we'll work through this pretty quick. If there were a lot of fish rising out here, then I would take more time to work it through, but 
at the minute we're just going to fish it sort of quick and make a couple of likely drifts but not spend a lot of time on it you know walking down this pool the the really good water is further up but we'll still uh We'll still make a few drifts in, in chances just to pick up that one or two that might be down here. So if you sort of see the way I'm working it, I'm starting to work basically isolate that channel and work across each cast right in there. I don't want to go straight over right tight in there. I just think if there is one sitting more on the shoulder, then you have the chance of spooking it, but. So we've got probably um, a three pound uh, stick fish here. Weight's good, but they don't fight much, so. All right, so our stick fish is off. Just gonna make a couple more drifts uh, a bit further higher up into that slot there. So might, before we go any further, I might just touch some stuff up through here. Yep, there he is. So I was about to say, um, talking through that, is basically I'm just covering that bubble line. Yeah, so basically just covering that bubble line through there. Uh, it's the main debris line through this pool. So it's probably the most likely place where there's gonna be a fish. And he jumped on that basically as soon as that nymph hit the water. So probably gives us a bit of indication that we're gonna focus here up um, along that bubble line there. So anyway, we'll get this little fella back. Let's see there, pretty typical little uh, brown for this section of the river. So now we've got that fish landed and off, I'm just gonna take the opportunity to retreat my tabernas, my dry fly. Um, now I tie these with a CDC underwing, so I won't ever put um, silicon paste on it to start with. I'll fish it dry basically. Once it gets wet like that, I'll take it in my shirt or even if you have a towel or something on you, give it a good dry blow, just dip it in our shake. Give it a good shake. Just blow off the residual and we're fishing again. So it's just a good idea. Take the time and you know, even if you're not catching fish, but it's starting to float a bit lower to treat that fly because it'll fish a lot longer during the day. So I've got fish rising now, um, sort of up in this overhang here. I'm not gonna rush up there and make the shot straight to them. Um, if they're feeding in that area, they'll stay in that area, but I don't wanna burn any fish that sort of down below them, so. We'll just take out, that's, oh, missed him. Some of these browns are pretty wise, so you really gotta look for the finest hesitation on that dry fly, because quite often you'll just see it sort of stop. You won't, won't get a really good indication. I'm gonna work out from this side in tight to there, rather than just going that shot straight over the top. I'm fishing much longer than I normally would too. Just because the water's so flat, I just want to stay back a bit more on it, so. So basically as I go, I'm just very slowly stepping up river. Um, and then my length of cast is not really changing. I'm just using my feet to tick upstream basically, so. Yeah, got him. Oh, go on. <laughs> it was sort of getting into that likely sort of region there. There was, there's gonna be fish basically from where this, this tree's overhanging here up into that next little section, so. Quite often what I'll do as well is when I, you know, I have to take a stick off the nymph or something, I'll just take the opportunity again to, to retreat my dry. What I'm running here at the moment for my dry dropper rod, it's not really an ideal setup. I'd much rather have a four or three weight, nine foot four or three weight to fish this. Uh, I didn't bring, didn't bring one with me. 
you can see sort of on that last fish I missed, I'm sort of struggling to get tension and, and get a good bend in that rod. So yeah, ideally if you're fishing this sort of water, I'd, I'd much prefer the three or four weight, but we'll make do with what we bought. So normally as well, like if you're fishing this in, in a comp setting, you know, and you really got to maximize fish, I wouldn't do what I'm doing right now, which is walking in to get the fly. I'd probably just break it and then refish just not to burn the water. Seeing as we're just having a bit of fun today and I can't be bothered doing a lot of tying at the moment, I'm just gonna go pick him up. So we're coming into a beautiful little section just near this tree here. We've got a lovely uh, bubble line coming down past there. Oh. So I just missed another fish then. Reality is I'm late on these fish. The dry fly is sort of just moving. Um, so I've just got to be better with my hook set. As soon as I see that uh, dry fly hesitate, I've got to hit it quicker. I'm going to put a few through this bubble line here. Yep, oh, dry fly eater, I missed him. Ah, oh, no, you clean snapped me. There you go. That's a consequence of fishing 7X. <laughs> All right, re-rig then. Yeah, so look, this is not the right rod to be fishing 7X on. Like I didn't hit that particularly hard and I just clean broke him. He was a better fish, so um, it's gonna happen. I might bump up to 6X just to protect that, tip it a bit more. All right, so we'll do a re-rig here. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm adding on fluorocarbon to my standard leader. I like that. I like the line to sink on the dry fly in front of it. I think for one, it's less visible when it's underwater. And secondly, um, you just get a slightly better drift. Um, it's less likely to get pulled up by those surface currents. So I've got a, a standard 5X 15 foot tapered leader. And then I'm gonna add on my 6X tippet. So the way I'll do that, so I'll basically pull off everything I need to do my extension, which I'm gonna make about three foot. So just doing a triple surgeons here. So I'll wet him up, cinch him up, check the knot. So we'll go back to a tabernas because we just saw our tabernas get eaten. So why not fish it again? All right, and then on our dropper, we'll go back to our uh, little silver, silver beaded pheasant tail. It's been probably the most consistent so far for me on this river. So basically gonna slide back over to this corridor over here, but on the way through, I'm just gonna, there's a few sort of nice boulders here, which would have holding water in front and behind them. So I'm just gonna fish that on the way through, back over that way, and then, yeah, we'll keep fishing up that side where that bubble line is, so. So we've got fish rising up in the pool here, uh, but I'm not gonna rush up to them. I'll just slowly slide in behind. I mean, I probably should clip the tag to fish this section, but what I'm gonna do is just fish super, sh yep, there he is. Yep. So what I was saying there is, I could see that as a rising fish there. And I could have clipped the tag, but what I did is I'm just ticking up super short drifts just to not let that dropper hit the bottom and, and snag up. So something you can do, if you don't want to go the effort of clipping the tag, you can just do that sort of fish really short, sort of two meter drifts at a time. And yeah, he's inhaled that tabernas, so. And there he goes. It's good to see today, they're basically happy to, to eat the dry as well as eat the nymph, so uh, it's cool to see. So I think we've caught that riser that was rising in the, in the header here where it's sort of where it shallows out. I don't, haven't seen anything else rise so we, since we caught him. So he might've been a lonesome. So we'll keep ticking up each side in the slots because I think that's where 
Looks like nice holding water for fish. But yeah, if we see one rise, we'll target him again. Hasn't been super productive down sort of once we uh, got out of that tail out. So we might start moving a bit more quickly, just covering some water. We'll just basically make drifts and just search now. This sort of flat middle section, unless you got an indication there's fish there, you know, I won't spend a lot of time on it. The real sort of honey hole's right at the top here, so that's probably what we'll focus on. Try and fire one in under this tree here. There's not a lot of current, but there's sort of a good debris line drifting through there, so we'll put one under and see if there's one there. Not sort of the best angle to fish this on, but sort of got a really deep hole here, so I can't wade in there. So we're gonna try and fish cross current here. We're just gonna fish this transition zone, sort of what we call the tail out of the pool. We're gonna to have to fish sort of shortish drifts, just cause we don't want that drift to get funky, just cause I've got really slow water on the inside. I might jump in and actually just Euro this section just because it's quite deep. I think it's, it's one of those 50-50 stretches. You could probably dry dropper or fish at Euro, but we've got a few on the dry now and got a few on the dry dropper, so why don't we change over and we'll fish Euro, I think. So we're gonna slide in here and fish the Euro. I'm just gonna very carefully just crab downstream a bit and I can probably start about here, I think. See, this is the water I normally love fishing Euro. They haven't been here so far, or they weren't in this sort of water yesterday. But today's a new day, so we'll, we'll have a tick through. So I'm just sort of uh, trying to lead the flies. So you see, I'm trying to keep that rod tip forward of them. I'm really watching that cider to look for any little tick or variation. If you're not leading the fly well, you're probably not maintaining that tension in the system. There you, ah, one there. Get my feet set up nicely. That's bottom. I think we're gonna lose this one, so. All right, we're gonna do a re-rig, so jump out and do that quickly. So we're gonna stick with a similar three mil silver. What I like to do is I'll just put him on my little patch there. And then I'll pick out my second fly, which is uh, one of these Perdigans here. I'll just hang him up there. I generally will fish a heavier fly on the point and the lighter one on top. Um, you don't have to do it that way. Some people will fish the heavier fly on the dropper and a lighter one on the point. Basically what it does is if you do that, you're fishing both those flies basically are more in line in the currents, so more horizontal. Whereas if you've got the heavy one on point, you're more sort of fishing Two, <clears throat> two levels of the water column. Our rig's done there, we've got top dropper there, about 50 plus below that, we've got our little Perdigon. So anyway, we'll jump back in and uh, we'll see if we can pull one out of this section here. All right, so we're gonna keep ticking up this run here. So like I said before, normally these sort of Deep tail outs are quite good for nymphing. They just haven't been here, or I haven't found them here so far. The really sort of good water is gonna be up towards the front there for, for where they've been sitting, but we'll make the sort of drifts which seem right. Like this is a good, gonna be a good drift in here, in front of this rock. Got him, yep. There he is, so. Basically what I did there is, I made a drift and it was a good drift and I showed him the top fly. I didn't get an eat, so basically what I did is I dropped my, I lifted my rig up higher through the, through, through the water column and then I showed him that second fly. Yeah, so quite often if you make a good drift you don't get a touch. You can lift it up a bit and just show him that bottom fly more um, and quite often you'll get a, you'll get a fish to eat, so that can produce a few more fish on a good drift. 
He's only a little fellow, but he's a lovely brown. It's beautiful orange markings on him. We we'll slide him back. <sighs> yeah. Oh, lost him. So I'm going to fish this. There's, this is holding good fish in here, so I'm going to really try and put every drift I can in here. Yep, got him. So they, again, these takes are really, really subtle. I'm really trying to watch that indicator. They're not really hammering it. So he's eating something different there. He's actually eating that silver bead. It's good to know. It's telling me straight away that my fly selection's good. Um, they've both been eaten um, and yeah. It's good to get that reassurance of a couple of fish on, on either one of your fly options. Uh, it just tells you that, that you're sort of in the ballpark with what you're fishing. I could probably up the, the bottom bead weight a fraction here. It's taken me a little while to get down to depth. What you can do is I'll show you on the next cast. I'll really tuck cast and I'll punch it into the current like that and I'll just get me down to depth a bit quicker. So I probably made every drift I, I wanted to through that rocky section. Might try and see if there's enough current um, at the back here uh, to get that drift, which doesn't look like there is. If I can get it right over to that seam, I'll try my best. Might just slowly try and crab out a bit. Sort of a bit funky, that rear current there, but we'll see if we can hold a drift through there, which we're not really going to. Nah, so it's not quite enough in that sort of tail section there. So the sake of uh, our video today, I'm not going to just absolutely hammer every little section in here. I'll just sort of show you when you're fishing the sort of sections that I, I think there most likely would be a fish. We've got a little bubble trail down here through a deeper slot. Then we've got the secondary current across the back here. So I'm going to try and pick through left to right through this section here and just look for any rocks, deflections of current subsurface there and try and put good drifts into that section and then I'm going to do the same on the back side. The drift's going to be a lot harder on that back one but we'll see if we can get something working through there which is pretty hard to hold a hold a drift at that range but we still got a back eddy working back into that rock as well so we'll see if we can get a decent drift happening in there which we can't, we're just sort of dragging out. So I'm gonna try and just hit this soft edge um, just on the very edge here before I work my way in. There's just sort of softer water there. Yep, got him. Yep, so like I was just saying, right, we just had softer water along this edge here. Um, so that's what I targeted first. Before I move in and get myself into that current, I'm just going to pick along that softer edge there because, uh, as you know, fish will sort of take refuge just on that softer seam and they've got that food highway sort of going fast next to them. So off he goes. All right, I'm going to start fishing into the middle a bit here. Ah, must him. There's sort of a little bit of slack current just in here. There he is. So we just had a basically a soft little, soft little pocket um, in this region. So we've got this fast little run there, and then we've got one coming down there, and then we've got a soft little cushion section on the inside. Um, so yeah, that's how we pulled him out. So we've just jagged a little stick there while I was talking on camera. But anyway, um, I'll get that this guy back. There he is there, another lovely little brown. So basically what I'm doing technique wise is we're coming into shallower faster stuff here. So I'm just going to lead that fly a bit more and I'm just going to use the angle of my rod to keep those flies up a bit. 
I mean, alternatively, you can just change those fly depths a little bit, but I like to just lead and just maintain really good contact then. There's a lovely little soft edge just here. So hopefully we can find one there. Normally I'd fish this a lot more um, sort of meticulously, but, oh, missed one. For the sake of just sort of pointing out where I'm fishing, I'll just make a few drifts in each region and I think it's good. Oh, I lost him. I knew there had to be one there, but yeah, you can sort of see, and hopefully you can see this on camera. We've got fast current here. We've got a fast current on the outside. And we've got a little bit of a soft cushion through this section here. So it just gives them a bit of relief in that current. Well, mate, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. No problem at all. Um, it was really interesting to just to watch you break down the pool. Yep. Where did you think was the the best, the sort of the hot spot in the pool today? I mean, for me, I'm always going to tend up towards that head where that running water is. I mean, <clears throat> for the sake of the video, you know, I didn't really hammer it through there, and I might. <laughs> after we finish go back and pick the rest of the fish out of that but that's always the, the you know the good water but having said that it, you're fishing a very particular style of of nymphing in that water yeah. it's great fun to get into the back of that pool fish those rising fish you know that's it's it's you know what i enjoy most fly fishing is that sort of you know dry fly slow water stuff where you yet to target fish and have to eat um yeah. but yeah it's uh it was good today to show you you know we we sort of we got fish on the dry dropper nymph we got one to eat the dry yeah. and we did the urine thing so hopefully it gave you a bit of an idea of of how i sort of look at water and break it down going into it yeah yeah and that's a fairly typical pattern as well i think to fish dry or dry dropper at the, at the um yep. at the tail out of the pool and through the middle water yep and then when you get up into the faster water yep you generally, um, most of the time, you're wanting to switch to sort of heavier nymphs and get down a little Definitely. bit in the faster water. Definitely. You know, and, and you know, there's sections in that um, sort of where I caught that fish on the dry and I was fishing really short. You know, if you want, if that's what you really enjoy, you can clip that tag off, you can fish a single dry through there and really, really pick it apart with a single dry. But um, yeah. yeah, there's so many. It, in, it's a great piece of water to show as well because it, it's got a bit of everything. It's got the slow glide, it's got the tail out, and it's got the the um, riffle running into the head there so yeah fantastic mate no dramas well done. hope you guys got something from it <laughs> absolutely thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time cheers